So greetings everyone, my name is Dimitri and as always I will be your host in today's webcast. Um, the portfolio manager uh, mainly focusing on cryptocurrencies before traded forex and uh, ETFs with some options strategies. So what I found out is that cryptocurrency market due to its still early stages of development and immaturity it provides traders and portfolio managers with so many opportunities to take advantage of uh, like arbitrage opportunities uh, low fees trading so many things to do here so that's why crypto is very interesting and that's why especially my favorite topic is automated strategies because through automated strategies we can spend less time in front of the computer to focus on some other things in our life more important things than just sitting in front of the computer we actually have automated uh, algorithms to handle the job on our behalf just to follow the uh, the trade logic that we implement and we will uh, cover this specifically today so i will show you what are the uh, key strategies you can follow uh, absolutely on every market it's not just about the cryptocurrency market it can be also implemented in the forex market and stocks trading market well three strategies will be discussed today for the sideways for the uptrend and even for the falling markets how to minimize losses we will cover uh, the backtesting tool uh, which is basically an instrument to uh, test, like stress test strategies, various configurations before actually executing bots, before actually risking any real money. And that's achieved through the risk-free trading mode that we have at Beatscap, which is the demo mode. So yeah, both combined uh, makes up a very powerful tool which I prefer to call a stress test, stress test uh, tool, yeah, which basically allows you to develop and discover all strategies. And of course, we will talk about risk management, like what are the instruments that we have at Beatscap to uh, minimize your potential loss and to secure your unrealized profits. So in previous webcasts, we focused on the trading terminal because we have a brand new uh, terminal through which you can trade not only the spot market but recently uh, we enabled trading futures market as well but today like I really want to focus on automated strategies and how you can diversify your um, portfolio with different strategies in order to mitigate the risk and to maximize your return all right so let's go uh, first things first just to quickly remind you what is the logic of our automated bots is that we have the trading range and within this trading range we have other uh, limit orders and they are known as greed levels so basically within this trading range you let the bot to trade on your behalf so you have the highest sell price and the lowest buy price so that's the area where the bot is gonna execute trades limit orders so they are both sided like the sell limit orders and buy limit orders as well and we have different grid yeah sorry uh, so yeah so that's how it works and imagine Basically, the idea is that you invest a certain uh, amount of money to the algorithm. So you allocate your investment to the bot. And it proportionately distributes your investment uh, by all of the grid levels. So assume that the price goes higher from that point. And in this case, the board will execute the sell order. So it's going to sell Bitcoin at the price of 11,500. So what the board is going to do next is that it will take a portion of this 
cash out to allocate a brand new limit buy order, in this case, below the execution price over here. So that's going to be, in this case, limit order placed right here. So it takes 11,250 USD to allocate this new limit by order. And the difference, of course, in this case is going to be the bot profit. So that's 11,500 that we took from the market as a sell order. And then we deduct 11,250, which is required to allocate a new limit by order. And the difference in this case is what is known as the bot profit, which goes directly to your pocket. So this uh, pretty straightforward, like easy to understand algorithm allows the bot to uh, trade pretty much uh, every day, like 24 seven, as far as the price stays within the trading range, all right? So that's like an everlasting process because on the market, there are always opportunities to buy low and sell high because regardless of the trend direction, like uptrend, sideways market, or the falling market, there are always, you see these price swings like higher and then lower. So the market creates like higher highs, peaks, lower lows, and of course, these are all, uh, it's form swings and the bot is now able to sell high and buy low. And you see, these are some sample trades and for example, land trading to Bitcoin. So on average 220 trades, it has managed to execute per day. All right. So that's the pace I doubt that you would manually keep up with. So 220 trades manually per day, this is pretty much impossible unless you are a very experienced scalp trader and you literally spend the entire day in front of the computer, which for me makes zero sense since we have automated algorithms to do this job on our behalf. So I will show you exactly um, what are the key steps you have to take when it comes to the uh, bot configuration. So we will go through how to select the crypto to trade, how to define the trading range, what is the difference between the uh, grid levels from 10 to 60 and from 60 to 180. So how this affects the uh, frequency rate of trading for the bot, the investment allocation, so how to find the proper amount to allocate to meet your risk management requirements and basically what are the instruments to limit your loss and to secure your return in the short term in the midterm and long term perspective so let's dive into this and we will go to the bitcap platform here notice that i am already in the bot section so all you have to do is just to log in and click on bots over here and by the way let me just check the comment section just to make sure that everything is fine before i continue okay so let's continue so far everything is great so as you can see i'm on the bot section page so that's uh, the demo mode right now already on so these are all the trades here that i have they are currently active and all the investments allocated to h strategy is basically virtual money that i have here on my balance as i am now using the demo mode because remember as i mentioned demo mode is the perfect mode for you to trade risk free to experiment and to find your optimal uh, trade configurations cryptocurrencies you want to trade so basically that's your place to experiment to find proper like optimal strategies before trading on your real account and of course it takes literally just one click to switch back to the normal mode over here but we will stick to the demo mode because here i have virtual money and that means i have so many opportunities to show you how to execute bots so 
on the right side here you have the main uh, configuration dashboard and here you have the strategy to choose and so far as of today we have the s bot and the classic bot and the primary difference between the two strategies is in the uh, logic of investment distribution so both strategies they proportionately distribute your investment all right so let's say i want to allocate a thousand usdt and for this board let's say i want to have 40 green levels let's actually maybe use another yeah maybe this one okay 100 let it be 1200 in this case so in order to allocate this total sum among all of my grid levels here like 40 grid levels there are two ways how the like how bots handle this so the as bot it buys and sells i mean it invests uh, with each grid level the same uh, value all right so regardless of the price it will either buy less or it will buy more of the crypto but each time it ensures that for each grid level it spends the same investment so for example so that's uh, in our case is what the s bot okay so for example this is the first grid level and the price let's say here is uh, two dollars for any crypto just the crypto x okay and then we have another grid level higher and the price here in this case is three dollars okay and the s bot will spend the same investment value for each grid level so let's say it buys i mean it spends only six dollars per each grid level so that means that for this first level it's gonna buy in this case what three points because the price is two the total investment is six per each grid level so six divided by two is gonna be three coins it's gonna buy at this level whereas if the price goes higher in this case it's gonna buy less coins but in this case it always ensures that it spends six dollars so six divided by three like the price is free so it's gonna buy two coins okay but when it comes to the uh, classic bot the classic bot regardless of the price it always buys the same amount of crypto and always sells the same amount of crypto so for example the price is over here let's say three dollars here let's say five dollars that's the one grid level that's another grid level so and for the uh, classic bot configuration let's say it always buys 10 coins so that means that here it will spend what 30 dollars and here it will spend 50 dollars so that means that when the price is rising of course with the rising price it's gonna spend uh, more money per each grid level and that's why the classic bot uh, significantly outperforms the S bot on the rising market because when the, the market is rising the uh, classic bot spends more investment and in this case we participate more in the market rally because the algorithm buys more crypto and that's why we are affected by the rally uh, even more compared with the uh, as bot whereas the as bot is optimal for the sideways market like you see over here the formation on bitcoin trading to usdt back in the time when it's been trading around 10k you see that's the period of accumulation when you see the market most some like in a triangle shaped formation and you you clearly see the support horizontal line and the resistance horizontal line this is clearly the period of accumulation and that's the perfect market uh, scenario 
market formation to execute the ad spot. So let's just compare just to show you. That uh, was XRP trading to USDT, the period of three days. And that was from the 17th of November until the 20th of November. And you see this was the pretty much the sideways formation so the period of accumulation before the rally. And for this period, like three days, it managed to make 0.9%. Whereas the classic bot for the same exact period, you see 17th of November, here is the same 17th of November, so three days period, but the profit here is almost by two uh, less. So it's 0.57 compared with 0.9%. So clearly, when the market swings within the sideways uh, formation, when the market is in the period of accumulation, before it breaks the resistance or before it breaks the key support level, all right, the ASBOT is the optimal strategy to stick to. So if you expect the sideways market to continue and you expect the accumulation to emerge, then the ASBOT is what you should stick to. You click on s -bot and here we go. So the optimal, like one strategy here is to look for the uh, channel formation. When you see a clear support line and a clear horizontal resistance line and the price bounces off the support and reverts from the resistance. So this is a clear indication that the market right now is in the sideways formation and you can take advantage of the price swinging back and forward from the support and resistance, all right? So that's the uh, configuration number one, when you have the 50% of sell limit orders. These are represented by uh, red lines and 50% buy limit orders. So 50-50 parity over here. So that's the like optimal configuration when you spot market scenario uh, like this one, all right? And the reason why the ASBOT is optimal for the sideways market is not just because it outperforms the classic bot in this case, but because it also outperforms a simple hodl strategy. So by hodl strategy, what I mean is just you buy crypto, it lies in your portfolio and you do nothing about it. So you just purchase Bitcoin cash at some point of time, let's say over here where I have hodl pointing at. And let's assume you just started to wait for the price to hopefully to go higher. And what happened is that it's been moving like crazy within this sideways market formation and you end up with this current price and from that point to that point you are up by five percent with automation like if you would have launched the s bot strategy you see s bot on this market formation instead of just buying bitcoin cash you would earn significantly more you would earn 14 percent compared with the uh, five percent from the traditional hodl strategy so that's the clear indication that automated strategy and more specifically the as bot configuration significantly outperforms not only the classic bot but any traditional hodl strategy all right so it 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 no longer makes sense to hodl on the sideways market when we have automated solutions like the one we have at Beatscap. You just let the bot to trade 24 seven on your behalf and you see the results. They are over here, 14% compared with 5%. And the second rule is not just to, on, is not just to spot uh, patterns on the market, like the one I demonstrated three minutes ago. But it's also crucial to identify the trend. So when you spot this pattern, which is a sideways formation, on a rising trend, 
statistically, there are higher chances that you end up with the price breaking the resistance, so you will go higher. You see, sideways breakout, the price goes higher. Sideways, the breakout over here, and the price goes higher. So it really makes sense to launch the SBOT strategy on the sideways market formation, like over here and over here, on the rising trend. You just need to zoom out the chart to see what the trend pattern is. And this statistically provides you more confidence that you end up with the price then reaching the resistance and it goes higher. Because what you want to achieve with automated strategies is to participate on the market rally as long as possible, all right? And what I'm uh, providing you with right now is with optimal strategies and market formations when you can enter the market with different configurations that we have at BitsGap so that eventually you will participate in the market rally, all right? And so, yeah, what we learn here is that for the SBOT, uh, we are looking for the sideways and accumulation market scenarios, which is basically are the synonyms. The trading range here is defined by the support and resistance lines. So regarding the risk management, what I suggest is to enter the market with the configuration where you have your stop loss below the support by 3 or 5%. So for example, let me show you. So let's assume you expect the sideways market from this support line up to that resistance. Okay. So in this case, your stop loss, well, per, like the perfect case would be to enter this formation somewhere around this price when we've been trading close to the support. So assume that we are right now at that point over here. Let me just circle this. So what you would do, you would enter these with this configuration that I have, which is pretty much 40% uh, of sell orders and 60% of buy orders. And your stop loss would be below this support by, let's say, as I said, what, 3%. Oh, let, let, let's make it 5, okay? So 5%. So this is the point where you put the stop loss. So when you configure bots, you have this option to put the stop loss. So set the stop loss exactly at the price, which is below the support by 3 or 5%. It doesn't mean that you have to blindly stick to these strategies that I am providing you with, but it's just that these are uh, time-tested, stress-tested strategies that I've been personally testing. And actually, you can find so many guides in the internet which explains how to trade from the support and resistance lines because they have proven to be like statistically successful. Because when the price bounces off the support line, it means that the... Uh, key price level has sustained and that it means that this buying pressure exceeds the selling pressure and it really makes sense to enter the market but when the price if it breaches the support at least we have the stop loss to limit our loss in this case all right so that's the trading configuration that you can have where your stop loss is below the support by three up to five percent Okay, and the strategy is here like the bottom top. Well, that's just the uh, way I call the uh, mix between the sell orders and buy orders. So for example, you see 30% of buy orders and 70% of sell orders. So this would look uh, like this. Uh, let me show you. So 30% buys, so in this case, it's going to look like this, and 70% of sell orders. 
So this clearly looks like 30% of my orders and 70% of our entire investment is distributed by cell limit orders. That's the configuration for the sideway formation, number one. And number two is a 50-50 game. So that's somewhere like this. And notice like each time I drag the upper price and lower prices, the uh, allocation changes. So for example, if I have a narrow buy side, that means that less of the quote currency, like the fewer USDT is required here. On only 171 USDT out of a total of thousands to make this work. Whereas around 180 INGs, because yes, this is ING trading to USDT. So the base currency here is like it constitutes around 80% or something. And that's clearly obvious on the chart because you see how many sell orders we have. So for the bot to execute all of these sell limit orders, we must possess the base currency to make it happen. That's pretty apparent. So that's why each time you play with the trading range, either you make your sell side wider or narrow or let's say buy side wider you see how the distribution changes so now with this configuration where i have a wider buy side i now have must have 714 usdt as a quote currency so that if the price falls from that point it would be able to buy ing on this short fall okay and so that's the way it works and that's the way you can uh, configure the trading range based on the um, based on the gap between the current price and the support and resistance lines all right so this is how it works uh, regarding the classic bot which is here classic bot Remember I said that the difference is in the way they distribute your investments. So, as I said, when the price rises, since it buys the same amount of cryptos per each level, of course, when the price rises, it has to spend more investment per each grid level in this case. And that's why on the rising market, Classic Bot outperforms the as -bot. And here's the example, that's XRP trading to USDT, four days period. And you see the exact uh, chart scale from that point. So the ASBOT would bring only 53% for this period of four days on this heavily rising market. Whereas the classic board would bring you 70% for this same period of time. And you see the same market like chart scale over here they are identical absolutely but just because the classic board buys more like it spends more investment and that means it buys uh, more crypto with when the price rises in this case uh, you end up having more of the base currency on your balance compared with the s -bot. And that's why your return is going to be bigger. So you are not only affected by the profit generated by the bot on these tiny swings. You see all these red circles and green circles. So green circles, they represent uh, executed buy orders by the bot. And red circles, they represent sell orders. So these are micro trades over here. High frequency trade execution is happening in this period of four days. But in the long term, like, with, like from the starting point up to the end point, since the classic bot buys more crypto with, when the price rises, you end up with a higher return, all right? Because the value of the base currency appreciates significantly, which is pretty apparent based on this chart. So for the classic bot, uh, what we want to see is something like this. 
market rally, so the trend is rising. The bot buys low and sells high on, so it executes this micro trades. So that's the high frequency. Do you see? Short rise, short fall. Heavy rise, short fall. But in general, the trend is rising. So that means that the base currency that we have in this strategy uh, is positively affected as the price appreciates. Like the price of the base currency appreciates. And the bot profit generated as it buys low, sells high, you see this marginal profit generated. It also adds a return to this strategy. So you end up with not only the base currency rising, but the bot profit generated. So altogether combined, this is what we call an active investment change. So that's something that traders are looking for. You don't, you, you don't want just to buy crypto and hodl it. You want to make sure that it brings you uh, like gradual returns. So like every day you log in to see the performance. You know exactly that in the bot profit section, which is over here, this amount over here is the money which goes directly to your pocket. So that's something that you already possess. And that's why automation in from that standpoint it is better than manual trading on a rising market. Because with automation, 100% is that with each day, you will generate profits which will be fixed. Like these are realized returns. Whereas when you buy crypto, let's say from that point, and you hold it to that point, you still have this profit unrealized. But as soon as you click on close the trade, it's going to be realized. With automation, it works a bit differently. So you enter, let's say, at that point, and each day it extracts profits. It, it sells and buys portions each day. So this goes to your balance each day. So you end up with a fixed return up to that point in any case. So that's the like that's the stability, and the yeah, well, basically the stability that traders are looking for. Those who want to extract profits from the market on a daily basis, which will be displayed on your balance, of course. Because let's say I go back to trading here, and notice that I have open position, which is a manual trade, which is up by what seventy seven percent. So my return for this Bitcoin position is $305. But I don't have this amount right now on my balance because it's still unrealized, of course. And as soon as I click on close, this will be on my balance. But what if I will not close it? And let's say the next day the price drops heavily. Of course, this will significantly affect my unrealized candle. And I end up with a potentially lower return. Whereas in case of automation, this is not a problem because each day it extracts profits from the market. Okay, so that's the biggest advantage of automation. It brings confidence, it brings stability, and you end up in a midterm and long term perspective with decent returns. And to actually check the um, like the, the statistics, you can go over here. And these are all like recommended strategies based on the monthly return. So it can be that for some cryptocurrencies, uh, you can achieve, well, on average, what I, I managed to make is around 400 and 300% if annualized, all right? So for example, for my current UFI trading to Bitcoin, if I click on view, you see, uh, already like investment change 10% for the period of 41 days. All right. And if annualized, this is going to be around what? 120%. And you can use the show back testing to test strategies and to see annual results. So if you would have launched, let's say, uh, ING on USDT, and based on this 
performance of past three days, if this, it would continue to um, fluctuate like this during this period, then you end up with 184% by the end of, well, well, within the period of 365 days. So that's going to be annualized return, monthly return. So this is the tool which you can use to find optimal cryptos to trade and to at least have some assumptions regarding the expected returns based on past outcomes, all right? So you can play with the date range. Let's say you want to see what was the performance from the 1st of December until today. So that's what, 24 days period. And for this period, it would have managed to make 38%, all right? If you would have launched it with specific uh, conditions, like with, in this case, 100 good levels, because you see, if I click on show backtesting, it applies configurations that I have over here. And that's why results can vary sometimes significantly, like 20 grid levels, 170 grid levels. So these are different configurations. So the more grid levels you have, the higher is the frequency rate right? because your orders are uh, so tightly allocated to one another. And when your grid quantity is around 20 or 30, you see that the gap here is bigger, which is exactly 3.15%. So there are two ways of how you can figure these grid levels based on the crypto you choose and the volatility of this crypto. If the volatility of the crypto is crazy, like uh, let's say the price can upswing, let me show you. Well, the price can go higher, let's say in a day by 37%, and then it can go down by let's say 20%. So this is what I call a severe volatility. So for this volatility, uh, grid strategy is optimal when you have from 10 to 60 grid levels, because the gap here is, is enough for you to extract this 1% of the profit per each grid level. Whereas if the crypto trades, well, if the crypto is illiquid, and it trades, let's say, 2% intraday up and let's say next day uh, down another 2%, then of course, for this tight market formation, you need more grid levels so that the bot has more opportunities to execute trades. And that's why you need more than 60 grid levels. So once again, the rule of thumb, if the volatility is severe, it is intense, let's say more than 10% intraday, then having less than 60 grid levels is enough. But if the volatility is insignificant, somewhere around 3-5% intraday, then having more than 60 grid levels, let's say 100, it really makes sense because that's the way of how you can make sure that even on this insignificant volatility, you can extract profits on a daily basis. All right. So that's the trade off. Definitely over here. So when you have more grid levels, of course, your grid, uh, like profit per grid is going to be reduced. But since you have so many grid levels, if you multiply these results, you end up with a pretty much the same result if you would have launched with, let's say, 50 grid levels, where you have return of 3.71% per each grid level. And it's just the case, I mean, it's just the matter of volatility. If the volatility is intense, then having less than 60 grid levels is enough. But if not enough, if the Crypto is illiquid, it's not popular. There are few traders and maybe institutionals trading this crypto or maybe market makers moving this crypto. 
then it, it really makes sense to let the bot to execute trades with the highest frequency rate possible. So that's why you need more than 60 grid values. All right. So that's the trade-off between the grid quantity and the profit per each grid level. But still, in any case, in the mid-term and long-term perspective, you end up with decent returns in any case. So you can experiment with these different configurations as you have virtual money, you see active trades that I have here. So that's clearly something up to you to play with. So let's move on. So this one strategy optimal for the classic bot. When you see a rising channel, you have angled up support and resistance lines. So when the price is definitely like successfully bounces off the support line, like over here, bounce off, bounce off and bounce off. What you can do, first strategy, you can enter when you see a bounce off confirmation. So not at the point where it touches the support, but at the point when it has already bounced off it and it is trading somewhere around this area. So at that point, it makes sense to enter the market. And this is the configuration which you can use. Of course, your stop loss is going to be below the support. And here we maintain the rule of having the gap of around 3 to 5%. So that's our risk management. Always make sure you have the stop loss to uh, control the risk in case if the strategy does not sustain. Because it's never, never guaranteed that if three times before the price bounced off the support line, it is not guaranteed that the fourth time it will not breach it and will go lower. For these cases, make sure you have the stop loss to avoid this potential loss okay another configuration three rising valleys when you spot this formation you can enter the market as well and according to this pattern you must enter at the breakout on the same level as the fourth point over here so when you see the price breaches this price level you can enter somewhere around this area so the configuration looks like this and of course the stop loss is going to be below the support line so always make sure you have the stop loss to medicate your loss and yeah so that's the like two strategies for the classic bot market is rising so first one like number one move for the classic bot configuration make sure that you anticipate the rising the rising market because Classic bot brings you more, like it's the best one to bring you the best outcome if the market is going to rise. The trading range here is defined by the support and resistance line, like you see in these examples. I always use support and resistance, so use them as key price levels to trade with. And risk management 3 to 5%. And the uh, configuration regarding the trading range, it can be like bottom top, 30%, 70%. Like you see here is somewhere, well, it's not 30%, it's around maybe 15%, whereas the, the rest of my investment goes to sell limit orders, all right? Which is can be quite risky in this case here, because the more sell limit orders you have, the more base currency you must possess on your balance at the time of launching the bond. So that means that at the time of launching the bot, you will be already significantly affected by the value change of the base currency. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's why my stop loss here is, is very close to the entry price, just to make sure that everything goes well. And if it's not, then at least my loss is uh, under control and it is as minimal as possible based on this configuration. So yeah. And the way I, uh, you can actually experiment on the same cryptocurrency with different strategies. So for example, those uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, it is not only trading to USDT, right? It also trades to what? To USD, which is another stable coin. It trades to USDC, you see? And also trades to GUSD. So at least you have what one option stablecoin, second stablecoin, third stablecoin, and fourth stablecoin. 
the difference is in the stable coins to which the Bitcoin is trading, but still this is pretty much the same cryptocurrency pair. So since at BitsGap you can only launch one bot per each pair, if you want to diversify, you can use this trick. You can trade Bitcoin to TUSD at the, at the same time with the Bitcoin to USDC, which is pretty much the same pair, but you kind of make a trick here. So let's say on BTC USDC you can launch the bot with configuration of 100 grid levels and investment 500, all right? And you can launch on on Bitcoin, but just this time use another uh, stable coin, let's say TUSD, and use another configuration. So let's say 40 grid levels. Let's say in this case 100, sorry, 1000 1, USDT and maybe another like different trading range. So if you launch this configuration and the previous one I had on, on USDT, this is the way you can diversify with different uh, trading configurations on the same crypto, all right? So as I said, you can achieve diversification not only through the assets you trade, like it's not just about mixing with different cryptos like Ethereum, ING, maybe basic attention token. It's also about diversifying with strategies. And here I show you the way you can diversify with strategies using stable coins. Okay, so you can trade Bitcoin with four strategies. All right, so that's the way you can use. And so let's say you want to launch long-term trades. So you can launch this trading configuration for TUSD. For another one, like Bitcoin trading to uh, USDT, you can launch it with a mid-term focus. And this ensures that you have a narrow sell side over here. So these are the ways you can uh, trick with different strategies. All right, so that's basically it for today. And we've covered the diversification through strategies, how you can use the backtesting tool to find your optimal configuration, because here you can use past outcomes to project future uh, expectations, just based on past outcomes. And using this tool, you can compare different strategies with one another and different cryptos with one another. And you now have these ready-made strategies which you can use the rising free, free rising valleys, the uh, horizontal channel. So all the strategies I provided you with, you can start using them now uh, to find which one suits you the most. And of course, these are not the only patterns that exist on the market. You can use other patterns that exist on the market as well, which is 